I'm an anti-feminist because I think it's oppressive, I think it's anti-male, I think it's anti-femininity. Now, it may be a very weak Brexit, but I'll tell you what, Brexit of any kind and leaving those treaties as well. That's the best yeah. ever interview. Yeah. The Michael Parkinson. You got nothing on this book. <laughs> G'day and welcome to Pello Talk. I'm Dave Pello. Now, we hear quite often that uh, people on the right, especially Christians and conservatives, are very intolerant, bigoted, hateful people. And uh, you know what? I have to plead guilty to the fact that I don't tolerate things which aren't true and pretend that they are true. They're, they're simply not. For example, uh, abortion is not health care. Uh, killing people has never been therapy. It's uh, got a fairly fatal outcome most of the time. And uh, what I often observe also is that those people who are lecturing me on how intolerant I am seem to have a, a fair lack of appetite for hearing any opinion different from their own, especially when it's full of science, logic, and compassion for every human life involved in the topic. And uh, one of the people who's been the recipient of vile abuse from pro-abortion apologists has been Rebecca Gosper. Rebecca Gosper is the head of a great uh, university campus organization called Life Choice Australia, which is empowering young women to understand their real choices and the real options and not just one choice, which the abortion lobby would like to shove down every young woman's throat. And it's uh, providing compassion and counseling and information where there's a, a lack of informed consent. And uh, recently, Rebecca came under especially ferocious attack as a result of her participation in the New South Wales debate to liberalize their abortion laws. And so joining me on Pillow Talk right now to discuss her experience is Rebecca Gosper. Rebecca, welcome to Pillow Talk. Thanks for having me, Dave. Now, it's always um, a shame when somebody is, um, you know, trolled or bullied online for being different, um, having a different opinion. And uh, it's especially unacceptable, if not criminal, though, uh, when they experience the kind of abuse you've experienced. Tell us the story. Exactly what happened? Yeah, look... It, it, it's crazy. I never thought something like this would happen to me. So I found out a couple of months ago that fake pornographic images had been posted online of me. So my face was photoshopped onto pornographic images of another woman um, and spread online along with links to my Facebook profile and Life Choice Australia and there were comments related to my pro-life work. So it's very clear that this was a targeted attack. This was intentional and this was by someone or a group of people who really hate the pro-life movement and quite frankly hate women and are okay with exploiting women in this mm. way. Yeah, it is uh, an especially misogynistic um, expression of, of opinion uh, in, in that way to, to do that. Uh, did you call the police? Yeah, so I filed a police report, um, went through the whole investigation with them and their detectives. They were amazing. Um, and this was right in the middle of the abortion campaign in New South Wales. So I was already working, you know, 12 to 16 hour days. It was crazy. And then on mm. top of dealing with this um, incident, um, the police were nothing but amazing. But So they took this seriously and they were very concerned by, by the, um, well, I don't know what to call it, the trolling, harassment, um, bullying. Yeah, it, harassment. It's, it's classified as abuse according to our law. It's image-based abuse. Mm -hmm. Because of that, the police did take it seriously. So I went in there, I gave a police report. It was sent through to the detectives. They were chasing it up. They were great. They were onto it, um, which was really good to see because this is a serious issue. Whether or not this is happening to a woman because of her pro-life work or the work that she believes in or for some unrelated reason. Right. Regardless, it's never okay to exploit a woman. Yeah. And uh, the, the abuse was um, kind of perpetuated and prolonged longer than necessary because you weren't able to comment about it publicly or request that the images be taken down straight away. Yeah. So as part of the investigation, um, it was recommended that the images were actually left online so that the police could track 
um, the person or people behind it. But it meant that because of that, I couldn't speak publicly about it at the time because the images were still there. Um, so yeah, it meant that I was silenced at the time, which was really hard. I, you know, I, I felt powerless in a sense, um, because I wanted everyone to know that, you know, this horrific thing was going on and that the pro abortion lobby does not care about women. No. And yet I couldn't go out there and do it. It wasn't quite that simple at the time. However, yeah. I feel that now I have the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, thanks to, you know, avenues like you, we can get the word out there and it's not too late. So yeah. it's important that we speak out about these sort of incidents. And so, look, the reason I want to share uh, the terrible thing that's happened to you isn't to give it more attention or to um, give them uh, more volume in their hate, but it's actually to expose them and point at them like the little child pointing to the emperor with no clothes is look, this is the side of abortion apologists. They are hateful towards women. They have zero regard for the welfare of women, for the rights of women, for the emotional condition of women. All they care about militantly um, and violently is, is hurting women and their rights to impose their views and not give a range of choices, a range of information and, and full informed consent to women. Imposing this kind of, of, well, quite frankly, sexual exploitation and harassment on a young lady is, is gross and barbaric and consistent with the culture of abortion apologists. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, at the time, I was so surprised that this happened to me, but looking back on it now, it fits in with everything that they're saying. They think it's okay to exploit women and their children. So why wouldn't they think it was okay to stoop to a new low, try and silence a pro-life woman who's standing yep. up for those other women? Yeah. You shouldn't be surprised by their underhanded tactics because they lack integrity and fundamental respect for women. So we so, shouldn't like this happen. Say that last bit again. Sorry, you just dropped out. I was just saying that we shouldn't be surprised when things like this happen. Exactly. Uh, but let's flip the tables um, and let's turn what was intended for bad for good. And let's tell everybody exactly why you've become such a target. What is the great work that Life Choice Australia is doing, uh, which is so threatening to those people who want to control women's bodies and force them to have only one option? Yeah, so obviously we're being targeted because we're effective. Why else would they waste their time on us? Yep. So we are on university campuses. We represent over 500 students now around Australia. We have pro-life clubs in almost every state and territory. That's when brilliant. It's amazing. Mm. I'm so proud of our students. They are out there on campus every single day, running events, running talks, working with pregnancy support centres. They're amazing. And things are only going to get bigger from here. We have huge plans for 2020. Mm -hmm. I can't say too much yet, but seeing us everywhere, you're going to see that the number of students skyrocket and there's going to be real change on campuses. We're going to be running real campaigns on campus. We're going to be influencing policy on campus and providing an environment where women and men who have kids or are pregnant can actually continue their education and then get into awesome careers if that's what they want to do. That's wonderful. And pregnant and parenting students aren't being properly supported and there's huge gaps. So Look, that is terrible. It's one of the, th one of the crimes of Australian, um, let's call it abortion policy, is mm -hmm. that there's unlimited, really unlimited funding for a, a culture of death. If you want to kill your baby, uh, the politicians seem to be enthusiastic, falling mm -hmm. over themselves to make it easier and more common and cheaper for you um, increasingly. But if you want to keep your baby and you, have, and you want the government to support that choice, zero options. There's no funding for that. There's no funding for um, pregnancy counselling uh, for any out, outside of abortion. Uh, and there's no funding for independent counselling outside of an abortion clinic. Uh, and if you want to keep and support your baby, there's nothing other than parenting payment. In Queensland, if you want to give your child up for adoption, you have to go through the entire pregnancy and delivery completely by yourself and then put your child into the foster system. 
there's absolutely no support, but heaps of institutional abuse available for anybody who wants to make any kind of life choice. It's terrible. And so for you guys to be offering that kind of, of pregnancy support as much as a, a volunteer donor based organization can is, uh, is a great need um, in society. Tell me specifically, what kind of activities uh, does the Life Choice group, what's it called, a, a group, a club on organisation? Yeah, the clubs. Yeah, okay. the clubs. What, what, what are the actual activities that a, a member of the Life Choice club would be getting involved in? Yeah, look, there's so many different options and it depends on your university because we want whatever we're doing to be right, be the right fit for that university. So what we would do at, you know, a really conservative Catholic university is mm -hmm. the same thing as the University of Sydney right. because that's what the students need. So, for example, in March this year at the University of Sydney, we ran a campaign and it was, it was called Life Starts and we were asking the question, when do human rights begin? And so we had these huge banners that we were taking on campus and we ran students through the embryology and the science um, behind when life begins and um, the beauty of the unborn and all of that. And then students had the opportunity to vote on a, on a scale of um, conception to birth of when they think human rights begin. So they got to voice their opinion. Mm -hmm. We found that the vast majority of students, even at an incredibly left-wing university like the University of Sydney, said that human rights begin in the first trimester of pregnancy. Wow. So I think people have this misconception sometimes that university students are all crazy leftists mm. who don't have the truth anymore and aren't interested in finding the truth. But I think that we need to dig a little deeper. So we ask questions. We want to challenge students. So I think that being pro-choice is seen as kind of the default position. Mm. And we challenge that because I think that most people aren't actually as pro-choice as they think they are. Yeah, that's right. And we get surveys which are quoted about how people, you know, majority of people want to uh, decriminalize abortion. And when you put that really simplistic question to people, of course, you're going to get a lot of people say that I wouldn't want a post abortive woman criminally charged. So that kind of question is going to, but I don't think you'll find a more pro-life person than me. Um, uh, there's plenty who are equally pro-life, but I, I'm completely against abortion in every circumstance. Um, however, if you ask a more nuanced question of the general population without a pro-life conviction, then if you said, would you believe in late term or gender selective or, or you know, for, for any reason on demand abortions, you're going to see vast reductions to the point of a minority of people actually supporting abortion when you just ask more intelligent, uh, nuanced questions. And that's, what the laws should should um, should represent. Now, I am really really proud to have Life Choice Australia as one of the sponsors and exhibitors coming along to the Church and State Summit in uh, 2020. And uh, there's going to be an opportunity there for uh, young people and to come along and, and see what's involved and and is it something that they can um, get behind and, and be a part of on their campus. And also an opportunity for people who finished university, shall we say, instead of older people, to, uh, to see, look, is this an organisation that you can get behind and how can you pray for them and how can we make sure that this work continues? Because, Rebecca, a university's got to be one of the hotspots for abortion vulnerability. Oh, 100%. You look at the age demographic of women who are having abortions, you look at the age demographic of university students and they almost perfectly match up. So mm. students are literally on the front lines of this issue. Yeah. If you really want to influence change. That's where we need to be is the universities and the high schools. And that's what we're doing. Brilliant. Love your work and, um, you know, strength to your arm to continue it. And uh, I'm yeah, so sorry you had to experience that ugly criminal behavior from the abortion apologists. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate that. But, you know, it's made me stronger than ever. It's made me more determined than ever. Great. So they definitely haven't won. This is just the beginning. You are what the abortion industry fears, a strong, empowered, informed woman who uh, will resist their trade of death um, with a heart of justice and compassion for fellow women. It's exactly what first wave feminism was all about before it became a, a toxic cult. 
Um, so yeah, I, I really applaud and, and congratulate what you're doing. Where can people find out more about Life Choice now? Yep, so they can head to our website, lifechoice.org.au. All the information is there. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we're everywhere. But if you go to the website, you can find everything else from there. So latest events, actions you can take right now, all of that straight to the website. Brilliant. That's lifechoice.org.au. Head there, see if they're on your campus. And if they're not, maybe you can uh, change that, be a part of uh, inviting Life Choice to start a club uh, on your campus. Is that the kind of inquiry uh, you'd, you'd welcome, Rebecca? Oh, 100%. Yep. We're always looking to start new clubs and get more people on board. So please get in touch. Let's do it. Brilliant. And uh, look, uh, if you face um, heat uh, at home watching this now, if, if you want to get involved in this discussion, don't expect it to be easy. There are incredibly aggressive agendas who are determined to promote the right to kill living humans. Um, but this is an injustice that we have to end in our generation. It's not going to um, be a short battle. So don't be disillusioned about how quickly or how easy this is going to be done. Slavery took more than a generation to, to finish. And uh, it's always wrong to treat living humans as disposable property, which is exactly what abortion does. And uh, we have to take the responsibility for that ending in our generation because those who've come before us didn't, didn't do it. And they left it up to us and we need to do it right now and make sure that it's not another generation that's promoting this, this horrific um, genocide every year in our abortion clinics. The, the thing about uh, the slavery trade in England was it was invisible. It was very rare to see a black slave in London at the turn of the um, 18th, 19th century. And, uh, and it's exactly the same today. You don't see the pain and the trauma of abortion. It's hidden, it's secret, it's out of sight. But it's an ugly cancer on our society and we have to take responsibility for knowing about it, being informed about it, spreading the knowledge of it and ending it. Um, so, Rebecca, thank you again for, for joining uh, Pello Talk today. Thank you for having me. Have you got any uh, last um, encouragements, exhortations for the viewers? Oh, definitely. Look, we all have something to contribute no matter what age or background you have. And I think that we have a moral duty to step up and fight for the next generation. So I would encourage every single person to identify what your skill is, to be something small or something big, and implement that for the good of the pro-life movement. Awesome. Amen. And thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that's it for this episode of Pello Talk. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, SoundCloud. There's a podcast probably on Apple as well. It is. It's on um, Apple Podcasts and, of course, YouTube. And uh, don't forget to head to the website, davepello.com, and sign up for the newsletters. They're nowhere near as often as I would like, so uh, you've got no risk of being inundated with uh, too many emails. And don't forget to... Uh, head to churchandstate.com.au to get your tickets for the 2020 Church and State Summit. Don't miss out on the early bird specials and um, buying your ticket right now will also help us pay for the costs that we've got to invest in right now to bring, bring that summit to you. That's in Brisbane on the 28th and 29th of February 2020. And we've got about a dozen I haven't counted, but it's, it's a large number of the highest caliber speakers from across Australia and even an international special guest uh, this year, Dr. Michael Brown. Uh, so that's churchandstate.com.au. Uh, and I would love to be able to count you as one of the early bird tickets before those special deals run out. There's also discounts for students, pensioners, veterans. And uh, if you can't come to the whole summit, there's even limited session um, tickets that are available there. Uh, but thanks very much for watching this episode. Keep up the fight to um, promote justice and peace in our nation for our neighbours. And I'll see you in the comments section.